Currently, all of the major fMRI analysis packages, such as AFNI, SPM, and FSL, all have automated methods for normalizing data sets to a template or standardized space. However, for those of us who still want to do things like they did it in the good old days, we can manually transform data sets to a standardized space using AFNI. To do this, first thing we need to do is we need an anatomical data set that we are going to warp to a template space. Now with AFNI, you can manually set markers so that you can warp this anatomical data set to tally rack space. What you first have to do is use the command 3D refit and the option markers, and then the name of your anatomical data set. What this will do is it will enable editing of this anatomical data set. Once that's done, open up AFNI, and you can just specify the anatomical data set so that it only opens up that data set. All right, if you're using a relatively recent version of SPM, something that's been updated in the past couple of years or so, right-click on this data dir directory or this data dir tab. What this will do is it will make visible this define markers tab, which you'll need to open up. So click on that. Once we have that, I'm going to resize all of these axial, sagittal, and coronal panes to make them a little bit bigger. Okay, once you're satisfied with that, go ahead and click on Allow Edits. Then click on AC Superior Edge. We're now going to be marking certain parts of the brain so that we can warp it to tally rack space. The anterior commissure is at the base of the fornix right about here. If you want to get more accurate, you can click on this close open crosshairs gap, so this middle button in all three panes, and we want the very top edge of it. So I'm going to open up the gap just a little bit since we're centered on the anterior commissure, and if you click in this pane, you can click the arrows, either the arrows on your keyboard or the arrows here, to move up and down one pixel. So go up until you cannot see the anterior commissure in this coronal, or sorry, this axial transverse section right here. It's disappeared. Go back down one, and you can see the anterior commissure starting to come into view. We're going to mark that as the AC superior edge. So close those crosshairs and click on set. For the AC posterior margin, as you might have guessed, it's right at the very posterior edge of the anterior commissure, right in the middle. So to do that, I'm going to use the arrow keys again. Go right a couple pixels, down maybe one or two pixels. And now we're going to be looking in the coronal section for when the anterior commissure disappears from view. So I'm moving again in my sagittal plane and I go right one, and now the anterior commissure is gone. I go back, and right about here is where the anterior commissure starts to come into view. So now I click Set for the AC posterior margin. Now for the posterior commissure, this is a slightly trickier landmark to find. A good rule of thumb is it's at the very top of the uh, cerebral aqueduct. Go back here, you can see there's this thin band of white matter right about here. If your anatomical data set isn't of very high resolution, it can be very hard to see it, but if you just look at the very top of the cerebral aqueduct, you're roughly in the ballpark. So again, I'm going to move around a little bit and keep going up until the posterior commissure, this bundle of fibers connecting the two hemispheres, starts to come into view. So about right there. Click on set, and now we need two mid-sagittal points. These are in the cerebrum, and we want them to be right between the two hemispheres. So I usually choose one that's right behind the posterior commissure, and we want it to be right between the two hemispheres. So about right there. That's going to be our first mid-sagittal point. Now the second mid-sagittal point needs to be at least two centimeters away from your first mid-sagittal point. 
For this one, I usually go a little bit more anterior, maybe a little bit anterior of the anterior commissure. Again, make sure you're between the two hemispheres, about right there, and click set. Whoops. Gotta redo that. Uh, this is a good teaching moment. So I forgot to select this radio button right here before I set the other one. So I'm gonna go back just a little bit and yeah. Doesn't matter what order those sagittal points are in. Once you're done, click on the quality button to get your marker's quality report. If there's more than a, say, two degree angular deviation between these two planes, then it'll give you an error and it will not allow you to transform it. This all looks good. And once you're happy with that, click on transform data to compute it and transform it into the ACPC aligned plane. So click that and now click on this ACPC aligned radio button right here. You'll notice your data sets look a little bit different. And specifically, the anterior and posterior commissures are now aligned evenly. The very top of the anterior commissure and the base of the posterior commissure are going to be exactly in alignment or pretty close. So if I turn the crosshairs off just to get a better view of this. You can see that right about right about there, the anterior commissure starts to go out of focus and the posterior commissure starts to go into focus. Just a double check to make sure that it did the right job. All right. So that's the ACPC. And now we want to go one step further and warp it to Tallyrack space. So click on define markers again, and now we need to locate the extremes of the cerebrum. First, click on allow edits again, and now the most anterior point. When we talk about the most anterior point, it doesn't mean in the middle. These two hemispheres can be slightly different in how far they jut out, and so we want exactly the farthest one at the most extreme point. You can see on the left hemisphere, it's jutting out slightly more. Okay, and verify that with all three views to make sure you're at the very tip of the anterior point of the cerebrum. So click on that, click set. And now posterior point. Again, go to the very rear of the brain and observe that these two hemispheres jut out at different lengths. So in this case, the right hemisphere is actually farther back. So I'm going to adjust this a little bit in the sagittal plane. Look right there. That's about at the very end of the posterior point. Okay. Happy with that. Click set. Most superior point. So you might imagine go to the very top of the brain and again there's some asymmetry between the two hemispheres. I'm going to go with this rightmost tip on the right hemisphere and click set. Most inferior point is a little tricky. It's going to be at the very base of one of the temporal lobes. So I'm going to check the right, check the left, and remember to check all three views. You might think you have the most extreme point just based on one of the views, but click around a little bit until you're sure you're at the very base. In this case, right around, that's a close one. I'm going to say right about there. Set most left point. For this one, make sure that you know the orientation of left and right on your images. When AFNI converts data, it stores the left and right header information. So you'll see it right here. Left equals left in this coronal view. Okay, they could be swapped. For example, you know, I could swap them right here. And left would equal right. But the default is, for these images, left equals left. And just verify that by looking at this string right here. Okay, so travel along the edge of the left part of the cerebrum. Again, using all three views to confirm that you are at the most extreme point. So about right there. Set that most right point right about here-ish. 
possibly right there. Okay, good. Most right point set, and now click on quality to make sure there are no errors. If there are no errors, you're good to go, and you can transform your data. So click on transform data. We'll leave this big Tallyrack box checked. That's some legacy thing from way back in the good old days, and just leave it alone or else bad things will happen. Click on transform data, and now you see this Tallyrack view becomes unlocked. It's not grayed out anymore. You click on that, and now we are in Tallyrack space. So the ACPC have been aligned, and also now we are in a bounded box. We're in the same dimensions as a Tallyrack Turno Atlas. And we can apply these same warps to child data sets, so other data sets that might be in alignment with our anatomical image. To verify this, and just to double check the goodness of fit of this transformation, I already have loaded some sample Tallyrack templates. So I'm going to read in this session to get a few more. Underlay is going to be my anatomical data set, and the overlay for this, I'm going to use the TT Atlas. This is color coding the key parts of the gray matter and also some of the basal ganglia. And notice that the outline is roughly good. It's not as good as it could be because in going into these uh, sulci and some of the inner areas of the brain, it's not really following along that well. So it does an okay job. You can also see this atlas specifying what you are clicked on. So right insula, left anterior cingulate, left caudate, things like that. I also have this other Tallyrack template, and if I overlay that, I can check the alignment between my Tallyrack warped brain and the actual Tallyrack template. You can see it's an okay fit. You might see that some of the brain is outside of the template space. That's, that's okay. We're really concerned mainly with these interior structures. So you can decrease the opacity of this overlay here and try to make sure that these sulci, gyri are roughly aligned and also that the edges of the ventricles are about where they should be. This didn't do a great job because you can see there's some mismatch between them and the automatic Tallyrack function in AFNI usually does a better job. In any case, if you're happy with that and you still prefer to use the manual transformations to Tallyrack space, this is how you do it in AFNI. As you can see, it's not very hard. You just need to be very aware about where the extremes of the brain are and that there might be hemispheric asymmetries and you need to use all three views to confirm that you're at the right point.